Hey guys, today we have a D&D green text compilation. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and while you're there hit the bell notification so you know whenever we upload and I'll see you at the end of the video. Your party is forced into eating at a vegan lunch. What do? My dragonborn fighter looks at his plate with disdain. He decides to pick it up and throw it on the ground. He yells at the host, Do I look like a fucking iguana to you? Host falls speechless. My party begins to glare at me. The bard pipes up with, I mean, kinda. <laughs> okay, this is my character. A cat girl sorcerer named Nico Maya Megumi. Fucking weeb words. She is a thrill-seeking runaway princess from her fairy kingdom. She likes showing off her gorgeous body to make herself feel sexy. But she doesn't enter any relationships because she's waiting for a true prince charming to come to her. So, what do you think? I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna say I don't want a lot of gold play. And it's gonna be like cringy a lot of gold play. Yeah. Like, no, I'm the fucking. <laughs> you know all that shit. Player brings this to my table. Me. What the hell is it wearing? Player. It's her chosen attire. Me. It's a bikini. Player. Well, yeah. Me. Why is it wearing a bikini? Player. Oh, well, she likes showing off her sexy body. Me. It's a cat. Player. Yeah. Me. How or why does a cat have a sexy body? Player. Well, maybe I find cats sexy. Me. Do you fuck cats? Player stares at me with a guilty look. Me. Get the fuck out of my apartment. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Party finds a merchant selling an egg. Is it a dragon? I bet it's a dragon. I want a baby dragon. Ah! It's a Kenku egg. Why, yes. I am a deviously evil DM. Just be sad, be honest Yeah, be sad. Kenkus are a bit shit, be yeah. honest Got one. DM last night was a real dick. Had a puzzle where we had to guess a word. Clues were... All of the letters are two colours of the rainbow, plus two other letters. Contains four of five vials. Number of letters equal to a prime number plus one, then two times a prime number. Word was... What? Conglomerative? Con -conglom conglomerative? If you need to write an algorithm to find a word in the dictionary, it's not a fucking riddle. Yeah, honestly, yeah. it's kind of gay, me honest with you. It's, it's a bit too much. Although, like, you know, everyone grinds about player characters and fucking lead all the time. <laughs> Holy shit. I thought every DM knew players were too dense for puzzles. Usually puzzles dissolve into trying to bash everything with a hammer. Yeah. Yeah, that's my experience. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is, yeah. DM won't allow my character to use scythes as a weapon because it ruins immersion. Are all D&D &D players this lame? Honestly, yeah. Same, same. See when the boy locks up with a scythe, you just know he's one seriously edgy, <laughs> edgy, boy. edgy, edgy boy, you know? If you have a problem with how somebody runs a game, run a game yourself. That's the DM's job, not mine. If they're going to be an ass about it, then they shouldn't be a DM in the first place. <laughs> the players decide to rob the magic item shop. Behold the most powerful spell of all! Are you ready to meet God? <laughs> <laughs> you come across a strange town not marked on the map. Giant haunted house you're warned not to go into. If they do, throw random monsters at them. And it's full of powerful but cursed items. After they escape, everything vanishes. It was all illusionary, apart from the cursed items. All a prank by a bored archmage who cackles at them before he teleports off. <laughs> Just a prank, bro. <laughs> it's a prank, bro. Just that fucking prank. picture does me in. I, I fucking love magic. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Honestly, that's actually quite a good one. I really like that idea for like, um, that would be a really cool, like, we one shot. Yeah. I think you could do yeah. a lot of that. Fifth edition. DM has unhealthy obsession with pointlessly massive mega structures. Seriously, it's constant oversized everything. Couple of years into meandering campaign. Plot guides us to big fucking holes straight down into the ground that we have to get to the bottom of. We search the surrounding area for stairs or a hidden pathway down. DM. You find nothing. How deep does it look? DM. So deep that light doesn't reach the bottom. Hmm. Dot PNG. Cast arcane eye to try to approximate death. DM. I don't know you'd be able to figure that out. Math is math. <laughs> 
Moss is Moss. 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 Well, he's a wizard with max intelligence who specialises in this type of magic, so he should at least be able to get a vague idea. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. I am completely okay with that. DM. <sighs> make an intelligence check. Important that bitch for the big 2 DM. You think it's somewhere in the ballpark of 600 feet. Asmar. Oh, I should be able to fly us all down. If some of us shrink. My flight can get a 600, and if there's any distance left over, we can feather fall. At least, I think I'm doing that math right. You said 600 feet? DM. More like 1,200 feet. He definitely said 600, but K. Okay. Alright, okay. No sweat. Okay. Featherfall should definitely be able to last the rest of the way. DM. I'm pretty sure Featherfall doesn't last for 2,000 feet. Oh, for fuck's sake. What the fuck? <laughs> Confused black guy gift. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we have an approximation of death, we should be able to free fall a little ways and time our Featherfall appropriately. DM. I'm pretty sure that's not how falling works. I'm pretty sure you just fall the whole way instantly. That's fine, I want to burst a blood vessel anyway. Spend, I shit you not, a fucking R arguing about gravity and action economy. After said R, DM finally allows us to use common fucking sense to get past the plot point he railroaded us into. Later, text DM. So now that we're past it, what was your intended solution to the pit puzzle? DM. I don't know, lol. Sometimes problems in life have no solutions and just are what they are. So what was the point of changing it? No response. You never really thought that through. No, you didn't think that through at all. How does one role play a war profiteer in a fantasy setting? Be me, weapons merchant. Be selling weapons to a local crime syndicate. The leader asks me what weapons I have. Lay out some popular choices in front of him. Start giving my pitch. About halfway in, I notice his attention is drawn not to the display of weapons sprawling across the table, but to one of his henchmen. I attempt to get his attention by amplifying my pitch. Me. The dagger is interesting. It's made of a specialised mix of Damascus steel and dragon hide. This makes it lightweight and very stealthy. A lot of my clientele prefer it as it doesn't trigger any peskish perception checks from nosy adventurers, which I don't recommend. I let out a chuckle. He still doesn't pay attention to me and still glares at his henchman. I continue. Me. But if it's true stopping power you want, then I recommend utilising the raw magical power of a wand of firebolts. I hand him a wand of firebolts for him to examine. Me. It's crafted from aged Feywild wood and powered by a priceless fire gem. It comes stocked with 10 charges and I guarantee you it will not fail. Examines the wand, admiring its craftsmanship. His eyes shift back to the same henchman. In one motion, he points the wand at him and casts a firebolt. The bolt flies through the air, hitting the henchman's head. With a fraction of a second, his head is reduced to a smouldering, mushy pile of bones and brains. I was taken aback by this action. Me. Why did you do that? Offended by my objection, he proceeds to point the wand at me. <laughs> Fuck. The other henchman in the room proceeds to draw their swords. Leader. What did you say? Knowing I was outnumbered, I quickly resorted to my charm. Me. Well, now you have to buy it. I proceed to grab the wand from his hand and inspect it for damage. Me. I can't sell a fucking used wand. He becomes silent. He peers into my eyes. He then laughs a mighty laugh. Later. A used wand? <laughs> that is funny. I like your style, merchant. I'll take it. <laughs> hey. Oh, sweet. See, if you guys never watched it, you need to watch uh, Word of War. Nicholas Cage movie. It's actually so fucking good. And Megan, don't even give me that look. Megan's got this thing where she absolutely despises Nicholas Cage because her mum's favourite movie is it's Face, Face Off. Off. You know that horrible movie with John Travolta? I think I've watched that movie. Or I've had to sit and forcibly watch that movie about... It has to be over 40 times. I enjoy that movie, to be honest with you. I think it's fun. I thought fun. it was great. I thought it was great the first two times I seen it. See, come like the 37, 38th. Yeah. I literally felt like throwing up every time yeah. I seen his face. But no. Go watch Lord of War. It's really going to be, trust me. Let's get on with this, will it? Bit of a tight leap out, but Lord of War. Be <laughs> Baby Boomer. Alright, your mission is to rescue the princess. The catch? There's an ancient red dragon guarding her that has killed thousands of adventurers throughout the years. Gen X. 
All right, your mission is to rescue the princess. The catch? She's actually half Lamia and will devour you whole if she develops feelings with you. Also, this dungeon will be sick and you will die unless you min-max to hell and back. <laughs> oh God. Millennial. All right, your mission is to rescue the princess. The catch? She ran away willingly because she's a lesbian and didn't want to marry the prince. That is very accurate. You're very to, accurate. That's yeah. too accurate for my liking. She is in a consensual relationship with the daughter of the pirate captain. That's Time. so millennial. Like that's actually too... <coughs> it's too, too millennial. Sorry. Zoomer. All right. Your mission is to rescue the princess. The catch? The dragon guarding her is actually a Lovecraft and great one. Will drive you insane and there is actually no princess. The queen was infertile and died many years ago. The king discovered he was in a game world and accidentally summoned the great one into the world. The peasants are going to revolt because the disappearance of the princess led them to believe the king is actually a cockroach in disguise and the princess can't be found because she's a small cockroach. The peasants are going to revolt so you'll have to perform guard duty for the foreseeable future when you get back. Also, this is going to be really hard. Like Dark Souls. And, oh my god, is that cultist wearing a tabard with an octopus on it? Oh my god, my head is shuddering uncontrollably. Pukes blood after failing fortitude check. While in the crowded market space, you spot a small green hooded figure rifling through your bag. Unfortunately, they manage to get away before you catch them. Fortunately, they seem to have only taken a few of your loose coinage, as the rest of your gear seems intact chalking it up to being in the diverse part of the town. You <laughs> <laughs> the diverse part of the town. Oh. You count yourself lucky that you didn't lose any of your healing potions, as your cleric is currently on a sabbatical to a faraway land. Later on, in the dungeon, you find yourself separated from the party and spring a pit trap. Thankfully, no spikes this time. You're still banged up and you figure one sip from your healing potion won't hurt. You notice too late, the taste is different as a small goblin girl falls into the pit trap. You draw your weapon and she lifts her torch. It takes a few moments for your eyes to adjust and the goblin slowly grins evilly, yet beautifully. As you recognise her from the marketplace, she offers you a familiar looking flask and only now do you examine your healing potion more closely. Why does this sound like a Goblin Slayer porn party? <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. An ancient evil awakens. It is armed to the teeth with disarming cuteness. Send one of those edgy blind monk type characters after it. Easier to kill. Cuteness is relative. And that shit looks like the worst shit imaginable. It's very sad that he will meet the heartless murder hobos in the very near future. <laughs> As you must. Yeah. As you must. <laughs> King has hired you and your party to be auxiliaries in the capital city because the military is currently overburdened after rioting breaks out. Academic agitators from the Mages College have been inciting the lower classes into a socialist republican uprising. Sounds like real life. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Tensions are made worse after military slaughters demonstrators. City threatens to be engulfed by civil strife. Rumours that elements of the military sympathetic to the demonstrators are plotting to storm the palace in a coup have reached your ears. You have been propositioned by agents claiming to be sent from the royal spymaster to back up the conspirators when the time comes. What do you do? Which side will let me indulge my orcish fandom fetish? TG, asking the questions that matter. Yeah, well, Garbro <laughs> might be one of those ones behind that. Oh, yeah, but Garbro's into his Oni. Yeah, it's only Oni he's more into. It's Oni-Oni. Oni-Oni, the Japanese fucking <laughs> ogres that he's into. Yeah. Hey guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one. We are currently working on a Oblivion Yee! green text one, and it's really good. It's a really old 4chan read where they ended up reading Facebook being LARPing as like the Imperial Guards from Oblivion. <laughs> it's actually really funny, <laughs> but like it's it's coming, it's coming. So don't worry about that. Like you know, it'll come soon. While you're listening, don't forget to join the subreddit. Put in your own submissions of your own we're, stories. We're going to be doing a submission tomorrow, by the way. Yes. Uh, 
looking forward to that. Our own one that was actually... I, I think that's actually kind of cool. First cold. submission into the subreddit, so we have to do it. I know. And I think it's pretty cool that people are actually like you writing the stories and putting it in there. I, yeah. I think it's really cool. I love hearing your guys' stories. I love it. You, please, put more in, because I really want to read yeah. them. So, like, as always, guys, remember, like, comment, subscribe, all of the good shit, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!